Welcome to Tim's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is Spiral Matrix 2. Given a positive integer n, generate an n times n matrix filled with elements 1 to n squared in spiral order. For given number 3, we're going to return a 3 by 3 matrix with the order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in matrix, like spiral order. So this problem is really not that different from the first spiral matrix. What we're going to do is keep track of the four coordinates uh, of the start column, the end column, start row, and the end row. Now, as long as the start column is less than the end column or the start row is less than the end, col end row, we're going to do a nested for loop or not nested for loop. We're going to do four for four loops, okay? Uh, and we can just make sure that we'll fill in in the correct order from the start column to the end column and the then go right, going, then goes down, going to the start row, to the end row, then go left, going backwards from the end column to the start column, and then going up from the end row to the start row. Now each time we make one fill, we have to increment or decrement our starting row or ending row or whatever starting column, ending column. And that way we can make sure that we're not going to be overriding any numbers. So when we go like say in the beginning we start fill out this right side when we're finished we're never going to be approaching this row again right this row the starting row is is done we're, we should never touch that so we'll increment our starting row in the same way once we're done going down we're never going to be touching this last column right so we'll decrement our end column and we'll just continue that algorithm and because this is a square there shouldn't be any funny edge cases here so it's actually a little bit easier than the first spiral matrix. So what we'll do is first create uh, the output. This is just going to be 0 times n. I'm going to say for blank in range of n. Now you don't have to do this, but I just find it easier to do that. Um, we'll also have an incrementer keeping track of the number that we're on. So we start with 0. Finally, we need our four coordinates, right? So the start column, the start row, the end column, and the end row. And what are these? These are going to be 0, 0, n, n. All right, so while start column is less than the end column, or the start row is less than the end row, we have to do our four, four loops, right? So there's going to be left, we're going to go down, we're going to go right, and we're going to go up. And I'm sorry, I messed that up here. We're going to be going right, and we're going to be going left here. All right, so it's just, let's keep it simple. All we do is say four, we'll be going these columns. So for column in range of the start column to the end column, we know we'll be filling up our output. First, increment our i, and we'll say output start row and the column will increment that say equal to i now once we're finished with this like i said that starting row is done right so make sure we increment our starting row so that we'll never go there ever again now for down we'll say for row in range of start row to end row what are we going to do uh, increment our i i'll put Let's see, this would be the end column, but make sure to do a minus one here because we we made it equal to n. And we'll say this would be the oops, let's set up here. This would be the row right here. And this would be equal to i. Now when we go left, we have to go backwards, right? So this is gonna be a little bit different. We'll say for range of start. I'm sorry, let's start end column. Uh, and we got to have a minus 1 here. And then we'll go all the way to the start column. Again, have a minus 1. And we'll go minus 1. So we'll go backwards. And we'll increment our i. We'll say output. Uh, let's see. This would be going left. So we're going to be the end row and column. Now I forgot here. Up, once we're done with the going down, we have to decrement our end column by one so that we never approach that end column again. Same thing here. We're going to decrement our end row so we never approach that again. 
And finally, going up, let's say 4R in range of, uh, wait, whoops, make that equal to I. 4R in range of N row minus 1, start row minus 1, minus 1. We'll increment our I. And we'll say output would be the uh, start, I'm oh, sorry, what am I doing? Row and the start column, right? Make that equal to I and increase our start column by one. And this way, when we wrap around here, uh, as long as one of these is true, and because this is a square, uh, both of them will be, uh, we'll be filling up everything that we need to. And finally, we turn our output at the end. So let's make sure this works. Nope, uh, let's see. Got n row minus one. Uh, more typos. All right, so I missed something up here. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go left. I must have. Four. Huh. That is very odd. How did I fill that up? Oh, what? It's always something silly. More typos here. We could equal to i, not subtract i. All right. So that looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So this is a n times. Well, <laughs> it's old n. Um, I guess technically it's o of n squared because we have two ends, but whatever. Um, I think that's self-explanatory. Now, normally with the spiral matrix, there's like some if cases for some weird edge cases when it's like a rectangle and stuff. Uh, but luckily this is a square, so we don't have to worry about that. It's always going to uh, fill in nicely with this right down left up pattern. So uh, that's it. All right. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.